this won't go on on uh, YouTube. So it's just for uh, Warcraft noobs and Dota frogs. Here's the plan. I'm gonna watch this replay. Then I'm gonna play one game of Warcraft. Then we switch to Dota. So why is this replay hot news? Happy is the most dominant player probably we've ever seen in Warcraft 3. It's a late stage of Warcraft 3 esports. And during the heyday of Warcraft, when there were far more tournaments, I could have made a case for it. Moon, Lin. But I think there's few players that are as consistently dominant in the last two to three years as Happy. Some people wonder if he's the best player ever. But he doesn't have the achievements yet to back it up. But he's the best player right now. That's what matters. Him losing is so rare. It's like... Yeah, it is It is so, so rare. It's like a discount on an NVIDIA graphics card. It just doesn't happen. So, word spread that he lost to Leon. A very good German human player that you would not put your money on to beat Happy. You start Warcraft 3 with one gold mine. This gives you 10 gold per second. But if you get a second gold mine, as we see here, 20 gold per second. It's good. More money, more units. And as good as that sounds, and as natural as that is for an SE2 or an Age of Empires player, you don't always expand. You don't always go for a second main building. Warcraft 3 is an RTS RPG, after all. It's not just units, and therefore not just money that turns into units. There's heroes too, with items, and gold, and experience. So sometimes if you take a fast expansion, you fall behind, behind in the strength of your hero. Or you fall behind in the technological advancement of your units. Putting up a tier 1, an early expansion, goes at the cost of going early technology tree up. Upgrading your main building from tunnel to keep and then to castle or from a necropolis to a halls of the dead and then black citadel this unlocks new units and technologies so far we've seen leon play a fantastic game happy he's always fantastic so we usually look at his opponent and we see how did he possibly manage such a feat so far i've seen leon make so many good moves he spread his footman so that the frost nova area of effect damage didn't hit all of them in the very first engagement, near the expansion, when Lich came over, Happy immediately Frost Nova at the Archmage, and Leon instantly ran it away, so that he wouldn't take any single hit while he was slow to an easy target. Frost Nova from Lich does single target damage, spread damage, and it slows your movement and attack rate by 50%. So if the Lich Nova is Archmage, he can trade effectively into the Archmage. He can do hits and take fewer hits back. So during the Nova, you want to avoid trading fights. And in general, Undead has an easier time healing up their heroes than Human early game. So Human doesn't want to trade at all. So Human does a lot of running. Human is the best at fast expanding because they can power build their town hall with multiple workers instead of just one. So they can get it up really, really fast. But in return, they have to play a large part of the early to mid game in not a scared manner, but they have to be prepared to run a lot. They have to be prepared to run to avoid bad trades. It's not that they don't apply aggression, they do. But a lot of what they do is a time buying mechanic. Footmen are some of the best tier one units that suck. They're some of the best tier one units which actually suck. Why do they suck? Well, they become obsolete. At some point, they are just food and experience for the opponent. They will eat them up, they will kill them off, and they can't get any kills back. But they are a very important transitionary staple unit that can help you creeping, therefore build up early strength. And they get defend upgrade, which makes them uh, take longer to die against enemy piercing attacks. Most ranged attacks in Warcraft have piercing attack type. But Leon didn't upgrade defense. He's fully embracing the I'm weak and I'm okay to die mechanic of the footman. And they're still an important time buying unit. By using them and by trying to save them, and sometimes you lose them, yes, you will have something that can withstand early pressure until you get better units, which is generally the knights. Even now, 
Leon is buying time with these weak units. He has almost no hope of killing anything. He did bring one crit fiend, one of those spiders, to uh, killing range. But Happy denied it with a dark ritual. Dark ritual is where you sacrifice a unit and you gain part of its health in mana. If you do it on a low health unit, you don't gain any mana at all. You're purely going for the deny. So the opponent doesn't get experience. That's it. And Happy did do that. But the fiend is still dead. So it works out. So for the most part, footmen don't gain any kills on spiders or otherwise. But you still gotta have them. Now Leon is setting up to go flying machines and knights. Flying machines can only attack enemy air. But Happy has no air. Strange, why would you start making them already? Well, human has to make them in anticipation of. And that's because how undead air works. Undead obsidian statue is a support unit. It can heal health and mana over time. But it can also practically instantly transform into a flying Egyptian sphinx-like destroyer that gains a lot of bonus damage anytime they steal magic. And they can steal the water elemental, for instance. And when they get that bonus damage, they destroy footmen and knights, even heroes. So you have to have flying machines in anticipation of. Because the statues may be able to instantly transform to destroyers, but flying machines cannot be instantly made. So, you make knights and flyings, and you show a couple of flyings, and you say, You sure you want to go destroyers? And if the undead sees very few flyings, then they will make destroyers. But if they see enough, they won't make any at all. So it's a warning. It's like police patrols, I suppose. Don't try to start nothing and there won't be nothing. So he showed the three flyings and now he stopped producing flying machines. The knowledge is more can be made. And now it's a game of chicken. Water elementals, knights will be used to deal damage and buy time. Now, normally... Undead has a one base situation where they rush, 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 and they try to break the expansion. But in this case, Happy is using a new meta that has been around probably for a year or so, which is fast expanding as well. This used to be not good as an Undead player, but he's really found a way to do it. Funnily enough, Happy being the best player for some years, he was not always the most creative or the most daring player to try new things. Not to say that he doesn't. He's developed many new metas, many new metas. What I'm trying to say is there were European undead players that used alternative strategies because they couldn't rely on their execution alone. And their alternative strategies were Lich Expansion, which is what Happy is doing now. But it took years for Happy to copy the meta that pe people like Krav and uh, Insuperable from Canada already played. And now that he's using it, it's extra scary because it comes with it, the wealth of experience and execution that he has. So now it is a two versus two base situation. So it's not like Leon will win so long as he can hold on because he has bonus money. He doesn't have bonus money. It's a straight up fight. What we can say is it's a lower tech army from Happy who is using the name Sasha27 here. Normally, there'd be a bunch of destroyers, maybe a third hero. Now it's very fiend heavy, a lower tier unit. And this because he had his own expansion first. Death Knight getting focused here. Oh, there is a Dark Ranger here. Never mind, I didn't see her for a bit. So yeah, there is a Dark Ranger. Nice statue blocks to keep the Mountain King here as he unloads damage on the Mountain King. Orb of Corruption is dropping the armor of the Mountain King by five. But he also has bonus six armor from two rings of protection. So he's really, really tanky and it helps a lot against such armor buff. You may wonder, is anti-armor the counter to armor? Or is armor the counter to anti-armor? Armor is actually the counter to anti-armor. The more armor you have, the less it matters whether you lose a bit of it. Uh, after all, someone that has infinity armor still takes normal damage from magic. So you would rather have two rings on Mountain King and one on Paladin. Kind of spread it around, make sure no one is too low in armor. Where they lose health so quickly uh, against attacks. Right? You'd rather spread it around than to say, this hero has six rings, do not attack him. Because the opponent will just say, okay, I'll attack something else. Your units, your other hero. 
But yeah, Mountain King is a high priority target, so having double ring on him, super good. Paladin is gonna pick up Divine Shield anyway. You can see it right here, this icon. And then uh, he cannot be attacked at all during the time, so rings would be wasted on Paladin. Except if he skills Devotion Aura instead of Divine Shield, but he didn't. Really cool game so far. It's gonna be an instant nuke on Paladin. I knew it's gonna happen, Leon knew it's gonna happen, so he de-shields before Dark Ranger can use her Silence ability, which would prevent the usage of de-shield. Mountain King getting focused, nice Holy Light by Leon. Runs his Mountain King away, I hear a Fiend dying. These knights have a lot of bonus damage on fiends. Paladin goes down. Staff of Sanctuary was not used. Mountain King is gonna pass the staff over to the Archmage and then he could use the Staff of Sanctuary on the Mountain King. But he doesn't. Maybe the cooldown is not available and you can't see it in the replay. So he just ran away and survived. Fiend goes down, but it's from Dark Ritual. So no XP will be granted. Nova on the knight. I feel like this fight is, is going very well for Happy. He's very good with the units that he removes from the fight. This Death Knight is not in vision, right? And many lesser players would just put it out of the fight and be like, okay, cool, you know, chaotic, let's focus on the main fight. But no, Happy noticed this branched off Knight from Leon and he kept running. Very, very good job. Somehow it's Happy that ends up running away first. I heard another Fiend dying as well, presumably to the Stormbolt from the Mountain King. Super, super solid play by Leon. And he's also played the right amounts of greed, hasn't he? After all, no towers in the main. He recognized Happy is playing a more basic army, heavily consisting of fiends, some statues, and not making a single destroyer to invalidate the purchase of these workshops and the flying machines that have been made. He's got four flying, so he's just starting to kind of scout with them, you see? So a fiend army cannot easily penetrate the defenses it's pretty tough to walk warcraft pathing army all the way in here and then start attacking peasants it's kind of a death trap you won't get out if you go in you know so it's going to cost you a tp for sure once you commit to that or you're just all in if you don't have a tp that's a lot of knights and knights are the counter to fiends but the fiends have a an advantage of range of course and nova makes knights slower than fiends without nova they're faster so there's a lot of play and counterplay here. Pretty low amount of towers here too, just enough to stop a couple of ghouls run by our skeletons, but not enough ever to resist the main attack. And there's a third base. Third base coming out for Sasha, for Happy. We have two destroyers now, three. All right, he's finally making destroyers. And somehow in anticipation of this, Leon had already been making more flyings. What a great game sense. He counted the amount of statues. He said, I've got enough knights for you to need destroyers and already started making flyings. That's actually such good experience and game sense. Flyings are wailing away on the destroyers up there, dropping low and while well, Happy is good at kiting, webbing many of them and then kiting backwards to make sure flyings aren't attacking. There's just too many of them. Not a single destroyer has gone down yet, but they aren't able to fully do, do what they would like to be doing, which is just free shooting on knights. Now uh, one destroyer finally goes down and Happy remains on the run. He has to keep running away from these knights, but he's killed a lot of them. It's uh, it's really impressive and Lich is getting level 5. Nice staff, nice staff of Sanctuary. We've got two staffs of Sanctuary right now on Leon. He's about to lose his Archmage. The Archmage! Oh, he just had enough mana for Holy Light again. Brilliance coming in clutch. Paladin himself now dropping low. He needs four mana. Three, two, one for D-Shield. And he's got it. Instantly activating it. Mountain King still alive. There is a mana again for a Nova. He's trying to go for. What is he trying gonna go for? He actually Novas the Knights. That means the heroes are safe again for a bit. This is such an epic fight, man. It's crazy. Necropolis is done, but gold might not start it. There is enough mana for a dark ritual. He could try the ritual fiend and then focus the Archmage. Without the coil follow-up. What? 13 health. Without the coil follow-up, he wouldn't be able to kill the Archmage. Absolutely amazing fight here by both. Leon has 76 food. He's saving so many bloody knights by running away, using Staff of Sanctuary, which heals them up to full, by the way. And look at these upgrades. He's really, really invested in the late game. Many players may not dare to against Happy because they think 
I have to kill him early. Or he's going to make too many high quality decisions that will end up winning the game for him against me. But Leon, he kept pace in lockstep with Happy every single step of the way. He's got three, three upgraded knights, 11 armor. He's now getting his first attack upgrade for flying machines, which already have the armor, not the attack yet. The army for Happy. 65 population. He's still making fiends. What are his upgrades? 3-1. Huh? Knights have a positive armor uh, damage type against the armor of fiends. And flyings have a positive damage type against destroyers. Both is amplified. Maybe this is why Happy says it. there's no point for me to get three armor upgrades. I'll just get one value point. There's no point getting the whole thing because if I get hit, I'm going to die anyway. Just don't get hit. Run the units away. So there is a TP here. This is a scorched earth attack. He's going to kill the peasants, kill the towers. And then TP out to defend. But the knight found the acolytes. He's 3-4 shotting them. I think it's a uh, 4 shot. A player's four shot In comes Leon to scramble himself to the defense of his base. Good positioning with Dark Ranger and statues in front means all the knights are idle. They are not going to be ordered to attack the statues except if you give a manual command and now he does. He kills the destroyer. The knights are attacking statues. One statue goes down. The fiends are safe. I do think that this ends Happy's bid to contest the skies. With one statue and one destroyer dying and having none left, there's no reason left to play around air anymore. By not playing around air, you're invalidating the 10 supply and flying machines here. On the other hand, it does mean you need to contend with all of these knights via ground methods. And if you thought abominations from the slaughterhouse are good enough to do so, I was going to tell you, you've got another thing coming. They're not good. He's not going to make any of them, but he did. He's made a punch, a stitches, a patchwork, an abomination, an unholy creation of different body parts from multiple corpses reanimated to do the bidding of the scourge and he's getting disease cloud upgrade which will do damage over time for 75 seconds for a total of 150 damage to dps the abomination is completely ignored leon sees it and says nice masket you got there bro there's no reason for him to focus it it's tanky there's no damage advantage he's expertly sending his knights in to assassinate the backline and suddenly he says psych Let's kill this before it gets disease cloud. The grain shipments must be stopped. The kingdom must be saved. We must purge this entire city. He kills the abomination. Disease cloud still in production, but he's going to have to remake another abomination in order to spread the love or the disease. Same thing for undead. That's their love language, disease. Keeps kiting backwards. Leon has allowed two acolytes to keep mining here currently unaware of this but he's got his own third base up that means the war machine can continue to pump away knights and pumping away knights he is chasing all the way into blight this is a no-go zone this is where mustafa told simba never to go the dinosaur graveyard and yet leon is going there he's like come on it's gonna be fun what's gonna happen couple of hyenas hey but you said uh no we're just gonna charge we're gonna charge in with knights onto the blight. He's focusing the death knight. It's getting safe. Nice heal pot. Maybe heal scroll. Can the death knight get away? He passes over the invulnerability to the death knight. It is still alive. He's trying to keep his fiends alive with a coil. Happy, not sure what to focus. Everything is so tanky. Devotion aura has been picked. He's got level one devotion aura, two holy light, one D shield, and he does bring Leon back for now. But where is Leon going to go? Is he going to go home and make a sandwich with peanut and butter? No. Not with peanut and butter. Nor peanut butter jelly. He's going for the acolytes. Five acolytes mining here right now. They circled around from the main how? I don't know. Or did he make three new ones? He's going to kill them. Does not have a TP still. Like an absolute giga chat. And his own mine is still mining. This one is mining again. With three peasants only. But, you know, still it's more than nothing. Focusing the lich. Orb of fire effect has been applied. That means less effective coils. It's dead. The lich is dead. One of two things will happen now. Either he's going to retrain it at the tavern or he's going to GG. Happy never makes his lich from the altar. Look, he's not even trying to make it. 
in Happy's mind, if you lose your lips and can't remake it, it's over. So he sends a unit to the tavern, he will sell every unit that was in production and he'll retrain the Lich as soon as he possibly can. But what's happening in the meantime? He's trying to get the Paladin, in comes the Lich. Not sending it home yet, he's busy, Death Knight getting focused. Night block, night block! Try the night block, gonna work out, let's get the coil! Is Happy holding? Have we been lied to? Is this gonna be a win for the undead? Oh my god, he gets the Lich, it comes in, he had mana for Coil, but he was able to get, unable to get the Coil on the Lich on time. Anything could have still happened here, had he been able to save the Lich, maybe kill a hero or two. But he was unable to get it on time, mass teleport, Lich goes out, he's gone, see a nerd. See a Zadrot. 77 population, it's 42 for Happy, he lost his Lich once, he's gonna sell buildings remake it again and do a final attack he's got to shut down the mining right here of leon he's got to shut it down he's gonna sell some items maybe sell boots no no just buy info and scramble to defend his gold mine Whew. disease cloud finish but never an abomination to spread it sag oh no not again coil he does save it for now but the next bolt can get him. The bolt cooldown started before the coil cooldown. Knights are attacking the statues. One statue dropping super low. Second dropping low. That's one. There goes the second. Archmage focus fire. Third statue getting attacked. Happy calls GG. And we see a very rare occurrence of happy losing to human. A couple of humans did it before. Sock, Chimiko, Fortitude. But not a European human, not in a very, very long time. Leon did it. Amazing. GG. Very amazing. Well fought. Happy ending.